NBA TV and NBA on TNT analyst and a man who called the uh, March Madness uh, extravaganzas on uh, CBS as well as Turner Sports. Grant Hill back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Grant? I'm doing well, Rich. How are you? I am. I'm doing fine. Uh, you know, you're part owner of the Hawks. You, you know all about ISO Joe and and what this guy can do. I mean, it it really is just yet yet another remarkable moment for a guy whose whose name sound you know sounds like just the average Joe, but he's put together an incredible career with twenty thousand career points, et cetera. Grant. No, Joe Johnson's had a remarkable career and. Uh, you know, I think it was a great pickup for Utah in the off season. You know, you had a team full of young guys, and they brought in Joe Johnson, George Hill, Boris Dia. You know, guys who uh, have experience, playoff experience, and I think there's a real good balance of of young and old. And it's really remarkable. I mean, at the end of the game, there, Gordon Hayward. You know, he's he's an all star on that team, but the ball was in Joe Johnson's hands. I don't know if that was by design or not, and. Um, you know, he, he, he did what he's done, like you said, for the last 10 years and uh, just able to make a play. He's, he, he's, got a, he's got this demeanor where he's just, you know, he, he's, he's uh, very unassuming, uh, very quiet, but he's also uh, ice cold. You know, he, he, he goes for it and he's not afraid of the moment. And once again, hit a big shot for Utah. And for them, that young team learning how to win in the regular season, which they did, now they're learning about the playoffs to go in and get that first game in L.A. Uh, is huge for their confidence. Well, I mean, and then, as I alluded to, uh, Paul George had the ball in his hands and uh, a chance to win it, but Indiana called timeout. Cleveland set up a defense that got the ball out of George's hands, and now Paul's saying uh, he should be taking the last shot. What did you make of George's post-game comments on that front, Grant? Well, I mean, I think this frustration, you know, Indiana played well enough to win that game, um, you know, I think down the stretch, I, you know, I'm not a, necessarily a big believer in calling timeouts in those situations. Uh, it just depends on, on time and score. I think one of the things uh, that happened prior to that last possession, uh, Cleveland had a foul to give, and LeBron went to double-team George, and he threw it to Miles, and they fouled Miles with about you know eight, nine, ten seconds left in the game. And at that point, you see that LeBron is going to – basically double team. So maybe a substitution, you know, maybe get Lance Stevenson out of the game, put in a shooter. It could have been, you know, Thaddeus Young, or it could have been even small going to Aaron Gordon or, or, or one of the guys who can knock down shots now makes it a little bit more difficult for Cleveland to double team and leave a non shooter. So that was what was sort of going through my mind. And instantly after that game, uh, I also think, you know, I would have liked if George attacked the double team a little bit. Um, he kind of accepted it. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, look, Cleveland made the right plays down the stretch there defensively. Uh, and that's what playoff basketball a lot of times comes, you know, is, is executing, you know, in the final minutes. And, uh, you know, as bad as they may have been throughout the game and particularly in the fourth quarter, they did what they had to do to win that game. Grant Hill, Turner Sports, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Ask him our poll question uh, that's now been up for – a couple of hours on our app, Apple App Store, Google Play, and the link at the top of our Twitter handle at Rich Eisen Show. Brockman, go ahead and ask him. Yeah, Grant, which home team down 1 0 is in the most trouble? Celtics, Clippers, Raptors. What do you think? I actually think the Clippers. <laughs> you know, I just, I think uh, we know, we know uh, the Raptors have been here before and, you know, three, four years in a row, I think, losing game one uh, in, in, in the first round at home. Uh, last year they did it against Indiana, and they were able to come back and win that series, and and, and ultimately get you know get to the conference finals. Um, you know the Celtics. You know there's some concern there because one thing you know in the playoffs you have to have guys that can that can get their own shot. And I think you know Boston has just one in Isaiah Thomas, and he's remarkable and been remarkable all season. Uh, Chicago, through all the ups and downs this year, they have D Wade and Jimmy Butler. So you know there's concern there, but. The Clippers, to me, uh, and we saw the, the we heard or, or sensed the, the frustration Doc Rivers in that soundbite that you just played. You know, there's been so many expectations, uh, and you wonder if the window is closing or has closed. And all the sort of imploding in the playoffs and the postseason over the last, you know, over the last five years, uh, the pressure that comes with that, the sort of feeling of here we go again. 
uh, you wonder if that's creeping into their mindset and, and into their psyche. And I think, look, if, if they were to lose this series or just lose, period, and not get far into the postseason, you know, there's a lot of questions about what that franchise is going to do moving forward. And so, you know, obviously it remains to see how, how this all plays out for them. But uh, that, that, that was tough. And uh, Utah, um, you know, they, they went in there and got that win. And I feel like, you know, they're young. Uh, and they're well coached and they're confident, and so uh, it's, they're more than capable uh, of going and winning game two as well. So, you know, I, I actually you can pick either one of those teams, but I'm actually just going with the Clippers just because of their history mm-hmm. and not realizing expectations. Well, I, all show I've been saying it's the uh, it's the Raptors, Grant, because you know you know uh, just as anyone else that hot players in the playoffs could be dangerous whether it's John Wall coming out with 32 and 14 for the Wizards or we saw what Harden did with 37 against uh, Oklahoma City Jimmy Butler who you referenced you could make a case that Giannis Antetokounmpo right now is a beast and I I don't I I'm just keeping an eye on them. Nobody's talking about the Bucs they get the Cleveland we all assume in the second round this could be a dangerous team in the making Grant. I agree. I mean, I think they have, they're a dangerous team and, and, and they're more than capable uh, of winning this series. I'm actually calling game two tomorrow in Toronto, mm-hmm. game three in Milwaukee, and then game five uh, in Toronto if needed. Um, but they are dangerous. And what was, what was really interesting was not that they won, but how they won. I mean, they pretty much beat up the Raptors and, you know, they, they had a almost a 20-point lead at, at one point in the fourth quarter. Um, they just are long. Uh, they're athletic. Uh, they play well together, and they have Antetokounmpo, who uh, is really becoming a star and is a, is a matchup nightmare. Uh, is playing with so much confidence, does so much for that team, and um, – you know, it just has continued his stellar play here in the postseason. So he also got help from Maker and Middleton. It was, it was a real good collective team effort against the Raptors. But their suffocating defense uh, presents a lot of problems. And then Kyle Lowry, you know, Kyle Lowry, uh, who's their all-star there, averaged 22 points a game. I mean, for him to have four points, two for 11 from the field in game one, it's just, you know, it's just you're not going to win against a good team. And he has struggled in playoffs. He struggled shooting the basketball and playing uh, the way he's capable of in years past. So, um, you know, we, we look at Antetokounmpo in Milwaukee and we say, you know, in two or three years they're going to be dangerous. But you know, they might they might <laughs> might be could, dangerous right now. Could be two or three days. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You never know. A couple more minutes left with Grant Hill here on the Rich Eisen Show. I want to hit you on a, a couple of items of teams that didn't make the playoffs. What do you think Carmelo Anthony's thinking right now, Grant? You know, it's got to be tough. I mean, it's just a continuation of a tough season and really a tough few years. I mean, it's hard to believe that New York, I mean, I remember when Jason Kidd was there his last year, 2012, 2013, and they were rolling. And they were playing the basketball, J.R. Smith, Amon Shumpert, Kidd. I mean, I think they won their division that year and went in as a two-seed, I think, or a three-seed. And it's just been really downhill since then. And to have, you know basically the the leader of uh, the basketball operations department basically say publicly that, you know, he should be gone. Um, You know, it might be time, you know, it might be time for him to just, you know, accept that and turn the page as much as, you know, he probably wanted it to work in New York. It just seems that there's, you know, there's a lot um, going against him and and maybe a change of scenery for a player like him uh, will be a good thing. So we do know that he holds all the cards. He has all the power and leverage because he holds that no trade clause option. Um, but I know there's some serious decisions in the, in the Anthony camp this summer uh, about his future and what his goals and visions are for the rest of his career. And then in terms of future, uh, I saw your name in a headline about the Orlando general manager's job, that they might be interested in you doing that. Are, are, you, are you interested, Grant, in that? No. No, I'm not. It, 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 it's interesting. I, mean, I still live in Orlando, but you know, I'm I'm enjoying um, I'm enjoying you know my role in the media, which I never thought I'd say. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm enjoying uh, my role as owner and vice chairman of the Atlanta Hawks. That keeps me more than uh, engaged and involved on the business and the basketball side. 
Uh, and so I, I, you know, I'm flattered, but I'm not interested. And um, it's amazing, though, how um, the rumor rumor gets out there like that. But no, I, I'm comfortable in my role. I love what I'm doing. I love what we're doing in Atlanta and sort of what we're trying to accomplish as a franchise. And uh, I, I am not interested in that role with, with the Orlando Magic. Well, I mean, I guess may, maybe just folks look at Magic here in Los Angeles. You're seeing, you know, in, in my alma mater, reaching out to Jim Harbaugh to try and save things at Michigan and John Lynch there in the Bay Area where you went to school now for San Francisco and maybe they, people thought you would have an itch for, for general managing. Do you at some point see something like that for you? But you know, no, actually, I don't. I mean, I think I, I, I I've always, um, I've always sort of aspired to to be in ownership, and and that was something that years ago that I, I wanted to participate in that form and fashion. And it's been really fascinating. There's so many moving parts. Obviously, the basketball side is is complicated. <laughs> uh, there's always a lot of very tough decisions you have to make. Uh, in season and out of season, but on the business side, you know, it's just sort of, you know, increasing revenue, continuing to connect with your fan base, you know, all these different challenges that every team uh, has, every market is, is different. It has a different story. So uh, it is quite fulfilling. You know, honestly, if, if I were ever, and I don't think this would ever happen, but if I were ever to like throw my hat in there and get back in the mix, I'd want to coach, you know, like to me, um, to be able to be hands-on with players would, would be fun. So I'm aiming for my daughter's uh, ninth grade AAU team. <laughs> um, <laughs> Great. Good. Maybe they should listen to me. You know. <laughs> well, just you'd have to clean up the Coach K language, though, Grant. In that, that, that is true. That is that is definitely true. That is uh, <laughs> I've uh, Coach K has ingrained that in me, unfortunately. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling, Grant. Enjoy calling. I'm telling you, this Giannis guy, man. I I. At, a, at Ted Acumpo, uh maybe folks just don't know him because his name is tough to say, but you got a front row seat for a star in the making, and he can make some hay, Grant. Enjoy it. Okay, Rich. Thanks for having me on, as always. I you got it. it. You got it. That's Grant Hill here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.